Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. Thank you for tuning in. And this is going to conclude our last and final video for CQG Mobile, a free web-based trading platform available at AMP Futures. Uh, we're just going to take you through the preferences menu within the platform. It's, uh, it's going to be short and sweet. There's not really a whole lot when it comes to the preferences. But I definitely want to point out the different things that you see and what's available to you if you want to make any changes. Uh, so first things first, when you log into the platform, as you can see, I am right now. On the top right corner, you'll see this little menu bar here. So you see, I want to cover a couple of things here. So you see the dollar sign here. So this is pretty much, I'm logged into a demo account right now. So it's pretty much telling me, do you want to go live? Uh, when you have CQGs or data feed and AMP futures, we will assign you the username and password for you to log into your live account. So that, that's not going to be a problem. You don't really have to worry about this particular icon. This one here is your account number. So normally it would show your account number if you have a, a live account number. It will show your AMP account number. If you have, let's say, linked accounts, for example, you open up a sub account and you link your sub account to your main account. If you click this, it will show you all the accounts that are linked to your, to your login. Uh, this is a demo account, of course, so it's only showing me my demo ID. But let's pretend you have account A and you have account B and C and you link B and C to account A to your login. So when you log in, you would see account A, B, and C from this little list here. So you can go ahead and choose whichever account that you'd like to view. Uh, for the meantime, I only have a demo account, so it's only showing me just my demo ID. But that's pretty much what this represents. This here, normally this is not displayed if you have nothing working and you have no open positions. However, I purposely uh, have a working order working and in open positions so you can see what that looks like. Basically, what the O represents is just orders, and it just gives you a numeric value of how many orders you have working. So right now I have one order to work uh, to sell a mini S&P contract at 2,000 even on a limit order. And that's why you see there's an order working one, one uh, a value of one there. And then you see P, that stands position. So I'm actually in the long position right now for 1998 and a quarter. I'm long. You can see position 1L basically means I'm long one contract. All right, so if you were long five contracts, it would say 5L. If you were short, it would say 5S. So that means short five contracts. All right, so that's what that means. Watch what happens when I cancel out the orders. All right, so actually it didn't refresh, which is strange. Hang on a second. Let me just refresh the page entirely. And as I mentioned, this is web-based, so all I had to do was refresh my browser for it to update. So kind of strange how it didn't... Uh, that's normally how it shows when you don't have any working orders or positions. So it just, uh, I had to refresh the page, but that's typically what it looks like when you have nothing working in terms of orders and no positions open. As you saw just a moment ago when I did have a working order and a position, uh, which I'll demonstrate real quick. All right, so now you can see you have one order working, or if I just execute a trade at the market, let me just get into a, a quick trade real quick. Now you can see that reappears. Okay, so that's what that represents there. So O is for orders, P is for position, the value next to it will represent one working order or one L, which means I have a long position. Now the preferences menu, which is the icon to the right there, which is, looks almost like a gear icon. You're going to left click, out, click on it and it's very short. So you have the ability to change your password, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Display name is basically the name of your workspace. So this one is the trading workspace that I'm working off. So if I decide to change it, you're just going to type in a different name here and just change it. And right, that's what that does. And then you have the interface itself, so you have different languages, four languages you can choose from. Theme, black or white. So if you want the white theme, just go ahead and select white. Let me show you what it looks like. That's what the white theme looks like. I'll change it back to black for now. All right, layout. I would probably leave this on auto. What this means is CQG Mobile is going to be able to determine what device you're using, whether it's a desktop or a mobile application, and it will properly scale your workspace based on whatever device that you're using. So I would probably say it's best to leave that on auto. Reporting currency, so that basically means it will show you your profit and loss uh, in that specific currency. If you trade, if you only trade American exchange traded products, it probably be it would make sense to leave that on USD. Otherwise, if you're trading, let's say a Eurex product, which is uh, euros then you may want to change that to euros. All right, so that's what a reporting currency does. All right, and you, um, I'm going to skip down to the good stuff here. So, for example, if your notifications is probably a big thing. Now, this is a, right here, buy, sell colors. Uh, I would probably say, you know, we have customers that, that maybe they may be colorblind, for example, so maybe certain colors may not, uh, you know, they may, may not be able to see certain colors, so they might be want, you know, might want to get in there and change, perhaps, uh, the different color schemes. So, for example, you see here, blue and red, which is the defaulted, Watch what happens when I change it to green and red. See how it just changes the color of the dome? 
So that's really all that does. It just basically changes the color of the buy and sell color. So usually buy is going to be blue, sell is going to be red by default, but you can go ahead and change that to whatever color that you wish. And that's what that does. Now notifications, this is probably where a lot of the changes will be made. A lot of the stuff I just I changed is all personal preference really, but this is where if you want to make, for example, if you don't want to be asked, are you sure you want to place this order? Are you sure you want to cancel the order? Are you sure you want to modify the order? So new cancel and modify orders. If you see a blue check, that means it's on. So what I mean is if I go here, place a trade, you see how it's asking me, do you want to place a sell stop? And I, I don't want to be asked a second time to place the trade. I want to be able just to click on that button right away and just execute the trade immediately. So if that's the case, then you want to make sure you disable the notifications under new cancel and modify orders. Make sure it's not a blue check. Just click on the other side. Now you can see it's a gray X. So now if I go to place a trade, it goes in immediately without asking me as a confirmation. Now if you know, you're new to the platform and you want to, you like that function, then you can leave it on. The main thing is understanding where to go to turn it off. So again, you're going to click on the preferences menu on the top right corner here. Scroll down and just look for notifications, new cancel and modify orders. Make sure there's a blue check if you want it on. Make sure there's a great X if you want it off. Order notifications, I typically like to leave them on. It's basically what happens is when you get an order filled, it, a pop-up will come up on your screen letting you know that, hey, this is what you got filled at. So I do like that. Partial fills, basically letting you know if you got partially filled on a limit order, for example, it's going to give you a confirmation letting you know that you did get partially filled. If you get rejected on an order, uh, that will definitely give you a pop-up and say, hey, you got rejected on this order, and it will tell you the reason. So I definitely, uh, my, my preference, preference, I like that having having those on. And uh, if you don't, just same concept, just make sure you click on the, the right side there and you're, you're looking for those gray X's to give you confirmation that it's turned off. And then the last one here is the, these, these two options here. Order hasn't been acknowledged in and market order hasn't been filled in. By default, it's set to 10 second values. Uh, from my understanding, from what a representative at CQG has told me, uh, typically when you're using a wireless device, whether it's a cell phone device or even a wireless internet connection, there's already going to be some latency. So you don't want to increase the amount of latency if you already have latency as it is. So it may be best to reduce those values down to three seconds if you are using a wireless device, whether it's a tablet or a cell phone device or a wireless connection in general. It might be best to reduce that down to three seconds. If you're using a broadband connection hardwired, then it probably won't be a problem. So 10 seconds should be fine uh, because you're using a hardwired connection. And that's pretty much what that does. It just reduces the amount of time uh, for you to get an order hasn't been acknowledged in error message or market order hasn't been filled in message as well. All right, and that's what that does. For now, I'm just going to leave it at the 10 second value since I'm, I'm in the office using a fiber optic connection that's hardwired, so I definitely don't have that problem. And I'm going to have to confirm what this is because this is new. I haven't seen this enable motion. I'm not sure what that does, so I'll have to double check to see what that is, what exactly that does. And this right here, as you can see, send diagnostic and usage data to developers. Just be sure to read the disclaimer if you want that check. Uh, you can see that data may include insensitive trade information. So if you're not a fan of that, you can always turn it off. Other than that, that's the preferences menu. It's pretty short. There's not a whole lot of flexibility in terms of making a whole lot of changes. But for the most part, uh, the main thing is really knowing how to turn off the notifications. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. Sometimes customers don't like being asked a second time to place a trade or cancel a trade or modify a trade. Uh, they want to be more efficient in getting that done. So the, therefore, you want to turn out those notifications off if that's the case. If you have any questions about this, please contact our 24-hour support team. We're at 312-893-6400, extension 1. Uh, that gets you directly to our 24-hour help desk. Otherwise, uh, definitely stay up to date on our YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Again, that's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Thanks again for listening in. We'll see you next time, and happy trading. <music>